All right, for this first um, example, we're going to look at poverty data. So we have all these uh, different states, 15 different states. We have their poverty rate, um, infant mortality, uh, the percentage of Caucasians living there, and the crime rate. Um, let me explain what these are. Uh, poverty rate is the percentage of the population that's living um, with an income that's below the poverty line. Um, the poverty line is a, adjusted based on how big your family is. It's adjusted every year for inflation. So right now, um, a family of four, um, it's right around $26,000 is the poverty line. Okay, so any family of four that's making less than that per year would be considered living in poverty. So you can see Alabama has 16% of their population living in poverty. Um, Connecticut's 9.3. Okay. Infant mortality, this is the number of babies who die, um, I, I don't know, within the first month, I think, um, per 1,000. So it's not a percentage, it's per 1,000 lives births. So you can see Alabama has 9, um, Iowa has 5.1 uh, percentage Caucasian, that's very, like, very obvious. And then crime, um, depends on how they're doing this, sometimes it's violent crime. Uh, but per 100,000 people, so Alabama has 448 incidents of crime per 100,000 people living in the state. Okay. So anyway, what we want to know is do these things predict poverty? I'm trying to pre predict poverty because clearly you've got Arkansas up here at 17.3%, um, which is pretty high, and then Hawaii only, at, not Alaska, only at 84 Okay, so we want to see, like, does infant mortality cause a change in poverty rate? Does um, race cause a change in poverty rate? Does crime? That's what we're looking at. Okay, so we want to uh, create an ANOVA table. Um, so you should have done your add-on last lesson. Um, so when you go to add-ons, you should have this XL minor analysis. So we're going to start that. And the only thing that we are working with in here is linear regression. Okay, so we're going to input the Y range. What are we trying to explain? Okay, we are trying to explain poverty rate. So you're going to highlight that and then click on Y range and it'll just show up there. And then X range. Last time we just picked one column, but this time we can pick as many as we want. Okay, that also works. So we're going to see does infant mortality, race, and crime. We're going to put all of those as possible explanatory variables. About variables, hard to say today. All right, um, I did include the labels when I um, highlighted, and you should, so click labels. We can set our confidence level. We're just going to go with 95%. And then output range is where you want it to spit the data out. So make sure you click somewhere else um, and then tell it to put output there. Okay, and we'll just say okay. And that's it, that's an ANOVA table, okay? So we can take a look at this. Um, we have our R value, which is only about 0.5. That is not very strong. Um, our P value right here, 0.35. This is not statistically significant. Um, uh, so we, so the linear regression equation, we're not even going to write it, okay? Um, so the linear regression model is not a good fit. Okay. Now, we still could, because um, we've got all the coefficients here, you can still write an equation using all these things, but this is telling you none of these uh, really have a statistically significant relationship um, in poverty, okay? So we really don't want to write an equation with this. Now, I wanted to show you one that does have a, a good relationship so you can see that. So down at the bottom, you have another sheet. It's called the selling price of grandfather clocks. Um, this is from an auction. So they have all of these uh, clocks that are very old, you know, 100 some years old. Um, this one's only 11 years old, but um, old clocks. The number of bidders on each, because um, if you have more bidders, you know, it tends, the price tends to go up, and then what the final selling price was. So we want to know, does the age of the clock, does the number of bidders, does that uh, affect the selling price? So go to add-ons, go to that Excel miner and start, because I closed it. If you didn't close it, it should still be here. 
linear regression, the Y range, that's going to be our selling price. So just click and highlight all of those. And click on Y. And then the X range, we're going to click and highlight all of those. Then in our X range, I included the labels. And then don't forget, click somewhere else and put that in the output range. Otherwise, it puts your table on top of your data and it's hard to read. I'll just say OK. All right, there it is. Close that so we can see it. So now we can see um, our multiple R, that's it's a little higher, 0.89. Um, and what we really want to look at is our p-value, and that is clearly less than alpha. So there is a statistically significant, statistically significant relationship between at least one of the explanatory value variables variables and the selling price. Okay, since there is a statistically significant relationship, we can go ahead and write the equation. So it's a y hat, um, and we're looking here at coefficients. Our intercept is negative 938 plus our next one is 9.38. We'll call that x1 x1, I can't make that subscript, plus, and then our next coefficient is 98.11x2. And remember, we need to explain what those are, where x1 is the age of the clock, and x2 is the number of bidders. Okay, and since this is statistically significant, we can use this to predict. So if we had a 100-year-old clock that five people were bidding on, we could um, get an estimate for what its selling price might be. Okay? The other thing we can look at is all of the individual p-values. And notice those are all less than alpha. So um, that means that both the age of the clock and the number of bidders are significant, okay? that they, they both affect the selling price pretty directly. Okay? So hopefully this has given you a good idea of what multiple regression looks like um, on your homework. It's going to be largely reading ANOVA tables, but if you need to generate some, you are now able to do that with Google Sheets.